sport bikes. Isa ito sa mga icon sa mundo ng mga motor maliban sa cruisers dahil kahit sinong taong walang alam sa motor will easily identify a sport bike because of its design. It has this character of speed, aggression, and intimidation. Most young riders will choose the sport bike because of its design and purpose, which is speed above all. But the problem with sport bikes are they are not beginner friendly, uncomfortable, and expensive to maintain dahil malakas ito sa gas at premium oil to give you all that power. Simple lang ang solusyon dito. Create a 150cc class sport bike kung saan pwede itong gamitin araw-araw and experience the high life without increasing the ownership cost. Back then, limitado lang ang choice mo dito sa Pilipinas as only Honda offers a 150cc sport bike which is the CBR150. Fast forward today and marami ka ng choice from different brands but I will present 3 wanted CC class sport bike from 3 Japanese manufacturers na nagko-compete sa mainit na segment na ito namely the Yamaha YZF R15, Suzuki GSX-R150 and the Honda CBR150R so stay tuned and stick around Simulan natin sa pinakamabilis sa tatlo, and that is the Suzuki GSX-R150. Launched back in 2017 along with the new GSX-S150 and Raider FI, this is the first 150cc class sport bike Suzuki had made since the FXR. It uses the same legendary engine since 1997, wherein ginagamit na rin ito ng Raider, kung saan naging sikat ang makina na ito dahil sa performance alone. Fast forward today, it, it is now equipped with fuel injection and liquid cooling to push its performance even more. It has the 147cc twin cam 4 valve over squared engine producing 19 horsepower at 11,000 rpm and 14 newton meters of torque late at 9,000 rpm. Long stroke ang makina, yan ang dahilan kung bakit malaki tignan ito even on the radar at nakatono sa top end ang power band ng GSXR. It can rev high at 13,000 rpm and stay there in a prolonged period of time nang hindi nahihirapan which makes it powerful sa racetrack and open road. Not to mention that it has the lowest curb weight of 131 kilograms. It can reach speeds beyond 130 kilometers per hour depending on the road conditions and your body weight. That's premium performance for a price tag of around 156,000 pesos. Kung malakas ang GSX-R sa racetrack and open road, may isang weakness naman yung makina nito, and that is torque. Bakit nga ba? Long stroke engines are prone to have lower torques sa lower RPM, which why magiging mahirap ito as a daily commuter kung panay traffic ang dadaanan mo gaya ng EDSA. Mahina ang low RPM torque wherein it will require you to rev the engine more before moving. And you would need to rev the shit out of the engine more pagdating sa kurbada to gain speed quickly. To compensate for the lack of torque, Suzuki did some weight savings. Gaya ng slim bodywork, small 31mm front forks, compact headlight assembly, slimmer seat, and most important of them all, a smaller tire combination. Mapapansin ninyo nyo yan, maliit ang likod at lalo na sa harap. And let's be honest, naliliit ang tayo dito compared sa competition ng GSX-R. But may function ito. Having a small tire combination means less weight. Less weight sa wheels means less inertial force needed to make the wheel spin. Less initial force means better acceleration and overall top speed. Light and fast. Yan ang concept ng GSX-R150. Based ito sa GSX-R1000 and bawat anggulo kuhang-kuha ang disenyo. The riding position is full-on super sport dahil sa under yoke clip-ons which will give you a more focused handling. LCD na rin ang dashboard and LED na rin ang headlight. Adjustable rear suspension and maganda na rin ang quality ng switch gears. And guess what? It is also equipped with Suzuki's easy start system and keyless ignition. With a seat height of 785mm, this is a height-friendly super sport that will give you a full-on experience with a sport bike on a 150cc package. Speaking of full-on experience, pagdating naman sa kompletong package ng 150cc sport bike with a big bike looks but everyday usability, only the Yamaha YZF-R15 can satisfy that thirst. 
Initially, we had the version 2, but Yamaha launched the version 3 as soon as possible when the GSXR was released sa Pilipinas. Andyan na ang benta. Magpapahuli pa ba si Yamaha? Di ba? The YZF R1 file emphasizes the speed and handling character of the Mighty R1 in a small package. Gamit nito ang bagong makina which is the 155cc single cam 4 valve squared LC4V engine producing 19.3 horsepower at 10,000 rpm and 14.7 newton meters of torque at 8,000 and a half rpm. Thanks to variable valve actuation, hindi na nito kailangan maging short stroke to produce healthy torque sa low and mid rev range. Go beyond 7,000 rpm and the cams will adjust to produce more top end power for the open road. Despite na may VVA to compensate, hindi talaga kaya mag-build ng rev ng mabilis ang single cam engine unlike sa proper na twin cam setup. Since VVA helps the R15 with good torque down low, this makes it easy to use sa city dahil hindi mo na kailangang pahirapan ng makina just to move the motorcycle. And pagdating naman sa open straight, mas mabilis ang GSX R150 sa dudo, no doubt. But the R15 can catch up, regardless dahil parehas lang namang 150cc yan. But the R15 can cruise sa 6 gear at a lower RPM easily. And kaya mag-accelerate na mabilis sa laban kapag kurbada na, due to the strong torque. But regardless, both can reach around or beyond 130km per hour. Again, depending on your weight, wind condition, and balls to do it. Kapag pinagtabi mo ang GSX-R150 and R15, magugulat ka na malaki ang R15 and mukhang big bike talaga dahil sa sculpted plastic tank cover and fairings nito. And it feels premium dahil equip ito ng premium parts like the LCD dashboard, anodized upside down 37mm forks, bigger tires, VVA, assist and slipper clutch, LED headlamp, delta box frame, tall windscreen, premium switch gear and sculpted aluminum swing arm, making the bike's curb weight to 137kg. All these premium features commands the premium price tag of 165,000 pesos. Unlike the GSXR na yakang yakan ng hindi binayaan ng tangkad, mas mataas ang seat height ng R15 at 815mm, which can be a challenge for those baguan sa pagmumotor or sa matangkad ng motor. Pero kapag nasanay ka na, you would feel na advantage ang mataas na seat height. You would feel na big bike ang motor mo. The R15 has a super sport riding position with the under yoke clip-ons. And with the tall seat height and rear set, this is a full-on attack mode, making corner carving easier. There is one similar character in the GSX R150 and R15. They are both pure super sport class bikes at ang suspension tuning ng dalawa is on the stiffer settings to provide the best handling and feedback, lalo na sa cornering, but bawas ang comfort levels nito especially if you would do long rides na walang pahinga. Mararamdaman mo ang tigas at nipis ng upuan at kalaban mo lagi ang uneven roads, humps and bumps, sa alsada and higit sa lahat, laspag ang likod at kamay. And this is where the last motorcycle stands out when it comes to better comfort. Enter the Honda CBR150R. Launched since the version 1, it was the first 150cc sport bike with fuel-injected twin cam engine with liquid cooling to land on our shores. At naging instant favorite ito ng maraming riders before the R15 came into our market. Fast forward today and it has been updated for 2019 with a slightly redesigned bodywork and taller windscreen. Before Honda decides to launch an all new version. Powered by the 149cc K56 twin cam 4 valve squared engine producing 17 horsepower at 9000 rpm and a healthy 13.8 newton meters of torque early at 7000 rpm. Back then, ito ang pinakatap of the line na makina, but fast forward today and it has the least power of the three. But unlike the other two, sobrang refined na makina na ito. It has low vibration and noise levels. The engine is responsive and builds revs fast like a GSXR, but this one has an evenly squared engine. Balanced lang ang K56 engine as it has a good low down torque, healthy mid range, and top end power thanks to the twin cam setup. Most likely, ang iisipin mo na ay 17 horsepower lang, mahina. Well, jan ka nagkakamali. 
yes, mabilis ma-reach ang top speed ng GSX-R at R15 pero 150cc lang ang mga motor na ito. And eventually, magkikita rin ang tatlo sa top speed level dahil hindi sila nagkakalayo ng performance. At most likely, speedometer error lang ang 150km per hour. Best to get the real numbers sa GPS or race logic data. 17 horses might not be enough dahil may limiter ang CBR. Unlock it with a racing ECU and dito mo makikita ang tunay na kulay ng K56 engine. Unlike sa GSX-R at R15 na pure super sport ng riding position, the CBR has a nice upright riding stance with a raised clip-ons and a low seat height of 797mm. Hindi subsog. Just like any Honda, maganda ang quality nito. The switch gear is tactile and gives you a nice click and clunk feel and a compact LCD dashboard. The paint job and plastic quality feels solid. All LED and lighting system ito, rider pegs are rubberized, reducing vibrations, and the seat is plush for both rider and pillion. But hindi ganong kalambot enough to support your butt along the ride. And my favorite part is the adjustable suspension for both front and rear. Soften the preload kapag daily use, then stiffen kapag weekend ride. Pagdating sa numbers, the best ang GSX-R at R15 when it comes to all-out performance. I have personally tried both and pare sila nakakaputi ng mata. But if I would buy my own 150cc sport bike, I would choose the CBR 150R for a simple reason. It is more comfortable. Yes, mas mabilis ang GSX-R at R15 pero ang realidad ay gagamitin mo ang mga motor na ito araw-araw sa pagpasok sa trabaho or sa pagbiyay sa malalayong lugar. And comfort will be your best friend. Your only friend pagdating sa mga ganitong scenario. And the CBR outshines the other two. And with the price tag of 153,000 pesos, hindi ka na magre-reklamo. Add 12,000 more and you have the Repsol edition with dual channel ABS. Thank you for watching. Please do like, share, and subscribe for more videos every week. Cheers.